You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Pirates? Did you say pirates, Chief? That's what I said, Ken. Pirates. You don't mean those jokers with trick hats, patches over one eye, and knives in their mouths. That's from Technicolor. This is 9048. Phil Schmidt, the modern pirate is a little different. Uses two-way radio, machine guns, and diesel engines. And he looks like any other ship's passenger. You you mean these pirates are for real? Mr. Thurston, you told me we were going on a little cruise. We are, Pagon. A cruise down the China coast. Now, this gang of pirates have taken more than $2 million in gold from China coast steamers in the last six months. The Chinese Maritime Bureau expects to hear from them again soon. And they've asked for you, Ken. But they didn't ask for Zeltschmidt. So I'll get my money back on my yachting suit. No pirate is going to make me walk the plunk. I resign, please. That's too bad, Pagon. My Mandarin dialect will do up north, but farther south in Hong Kong, I could use your knowledge of Cantonese. Hong Kong? Well, why didn't you say we were going to Hong Kong? I would draw my resignation. Huh. The black marketeer's heaven. Who's afraid of pirates? Excuse me now, please. Okay, Chief. Now, look, Ken, I know Pagan's a hard man to keep a secret from. But no one, not even the captain of the ship, the Manchu Queen, which are boarding in Tsing Tao... We'll know there's a thousand pounds of gold aboard her. Well, at the present price of gold, that's over a million dollars. Yes, and it belongs to the China Food Mission for the purchase of grain. With China's ruinous inflation, gold or foreign currency is all that can be used in business. What do you say, Ken? Well, if I don't go and the gold isn't delivered, it means a couple of million people won't live out the winter. That's what it would mean, Ken. Starvation. Well, that's a strange thing about gold, Chief. You ever notice that where gold is dear, life is cheap... Hmm. Well, I'll tell Miss Brooks to make your reservations for Ting Tao. Ship's rid of the sail. What a place, this Tsing Tao. <laughs> I make my first good profit in a year, a nice little deal, and what happens? Don't tell me Pagon Zelschmidt didn't get his money. Oh, no, I got paid in Chinese money. Twelve million dollars to one American buck. I need four boats to take my profit with me. Hey, how are you doing, Mr. Thurston? The leader of this piracy outfit, the one we're looking for, would very likely book passage through to Hong Kong first class. There are only three such bookings to Hong Kong. And one of them is really first class. Oh, what a cookie. Miss, uh, Bei Bao. You saw her? Like a ripe peach. 
They bow. Ah, that means precious one. Never mind the precious one. What about the other two first-class passengers? Well, there's an American James Bliss and another Chinese, a man, David Mao. Hey, look at those people coming aboard in steerage. That bunch wearing brown nightgowns and those baskets covering their heads. We are a religious order. Taoist priests, I think. That's right. Wear those baskets over their heads to shut out the evil of the world. I'm Captain Durfee. You're Thurston? Yes, I am. Glad to know you. My owners asked me to look out for you. Those holy men. You poor devils. You half starved. Well, they've been on a pilgrimage, <laughs> praying for the end of China's inflation. Anything I can do for you, Mr. Thurston? Well, just get us to Hong Kong safely. <laughs> You've been reading the newspapers. Stop worrying. We've no gold aboard, and even if we did have these beggars, no better than to try anything on Captain Durfee's ship. Very reassuring, Captain Durfee. Tell me, though, how can a modern ship be pirated in this 20th century? The pirates come aboard as passengers, the leader in first class, his gang spread out in second, third, and steerage. With 20th century weapons, they overcome the crew, seize the gold, and make off in diesel-powered junks. Mm, not much chance of beating an organization like that. Oh, I've found a 20th century weapon that takes care of them. Machine guns? No, the high-pressure fire hose. Fire hose? That's right, fire hose. A hundred-pound, three-inch stream of water crushing their bodies and washing them over the side is deadlier than bullets. And, best of all, ten fathoms of shark-infested water provides swift justice. Justice. Oh, you're casting off. I'll see you at dinner. Thurston and Mr. Zeltschmidt will be with you all the way to Hong Kong. Hi. You are interested in business in Hong Kong, Mr. Zeltschmidt? Oh, sure, Miss Precious. Uh, maybe you know someone who wants to buy some imported Chinese money? Miss Bay Pao, we're just touring out of San Francisco on American passports. Last Wednesday, due back in New York in November. That is almost a thumbnail dossier. Why not? Since we're all strangers... Heading for one destination to save a lot of time if all of us told who we are, where we're going, and why. Straight out. Well, my story is hardly worth telling. I am an entertainer, a singer. I cannot live on my salary, the horrible inflation. I must find work in Hong Kong or I cannot live. And you, Mr. Mao? I am a businessman, a rug exporter in Tsingtao. To watch the misery of my people starving under the inflation is much more than I can stand. I sold out my business, and I am retiring to Hong Kong. Running away, I suppose. Hello, what's your story, Mr. Bliss? Is this part of the fair? I thought I paid for my passage in gold. Oh, come, come, Mr. Bliss. That kind of attitude only focuses greater curiosity on you. I'm sure we're all wondering how you got your arm in that cast, if nothing else. Okay, you want my biography? Bliss, sucker. Ex-flying tiger pilot, age 28. Now on the beach, broke with a busted wing. My business is war, and I'm on my way to Hong Kong to sell my services. To whom, Mr. Bliss? The side that bids the most and the hardest money. Well, now that everyone knows one another, how about a drink? No, no, no just a second, Captain Durfee. Let's hear about you. Me? Well, I'm just the ship's captain. Yeah, but I've heard this is your last voyage. That you're retiring. This is true. China's inflation has me on the run, too. Like Miss Bay Bao, I can't live on my salary. Moving to Hong Kong to look for a job ashore. And I always thought you could get rich with inflation. Now, uh, you can, Pagan. Depends which side you're on. Oh, by the way, not that I expect any trouble, but if you have any valuables, it'd be wise to put them in my vault. Boy, bar boy, the drinks are on me, folks. That bliss fellow, or that precious one, even the captain, all broke running from inflation. All but David Mao. Right now, I'd say he was almost like the candidate for the piracy leader. But he is rich. Why should he want to get mixed up with piracy? Just because he's the only one who's gotten rich out of inflation. 
selling rugs for American dollars and paying off the rug makers in paper. A good, safe business and strictly legal. Why should he run off to be a pirate? I, it doesn't make sense. A man running away from hard money and gold could only be running to harder money and more gold. Come on. Let's have a talk with this tomorrow. <laughs> He was in his cabin a little while ago. I saw him. Come inside, close the door. Well, look at this. A picture of Miss B. Bow. To my precious one, David, from Precious One. <laughs> a dream puss like that should even be able to handle my inflation. Interesting. Mr. Mao and the Precious One pretending to be strangers. The door. Behind that closet curtain, quick. Good evening, Mr. Bliss. Ah, Thurston. What are you doing in Mao's cabin? It's sneaky. I had a proposition to make to Mao. And you figured a little inside information wouldn't hurt. Information never hurt any proposition. You wouldn't mean piracy of a gold cargo by any chance? Guess you and I are working on the same side of the street, Thurston. I figured Mao for being head man, too. But he's your property now, Thurston. You got here first. If you can use a pilot with a broken wing, call Bliss. Just a minute, Bliss. You know that every ounce of gold taken off this ship means the lives of hundreds of Chinese people. Lay off the Boy Scout routine, Thurston. The cheapest thing in China is people. I learned that risking my own neck for 250 a month. 250 and a reason, Bliss. You fought for the right side, remember? Okay, sucker. Is a sign of Mao yet, Pagan? Been out of his cabin for almost an hour. Let's get some sleep, Mr. Thurston. Anyone can see nothing's going to happen tonight. This is it. They're breaking loose in steerage. Someone gave the signal from the top deck. Stay here, Pagon. I'm going to the bridge. To the stations. To the stations. Passengers remain in cabins. Where to start, Captain? These so-called holy men in steerage. Sly devils. They had guns stashed away in a lifeboat. I heard the shooting. I ran. Attempted piracy, Miss Baybow. Nothing to worry about. I think we can handle it. Captain Durfee, D-deck under control. Steerage passengers disarmed. Nice work, Captain. Chief Swanson and D-deck, bring those pirates up on A-deck. Starboard side. A-deck, starboard side. Yes, sir. We are out of danger now? Everything under control now, Miss Baybow. I thought there was no gold aboard, Captain. That is what you told us. My owners told me nothing of a gold shipment. Who gave the signal to start the uprising, Captain Durfee? Come over to the radio shack and see. Let me out! Let me out! I demand you open this door! David! No, no, it's impossible! David Mao, caught him breaking up the radio room. Uh, I demand an explanation. David, what happened? I came up to deposit my valuables as the captain suggested. He seized me and threw me in here. I caught him destroying the radio. You lie! We checked I came the valuable up. story, found nothing in the stateroom. You lie! One time I had it once. The radio room is wrecked, all right? It couldn't have been, Mr. Mao. I will vouch for him. You'll all have a chance to do some vouching in the Admiralty Court at Hong Kong. You're flying there under my custody. Mr. Mao is going to the brig tonight. Flying? That's right. Mate, take this man to the brig. No, no! Let me go! Let me go! This is disgraceful, Captain. Now look, I Mr. am Thurston. sure that... Coming on the deck below. The pirates from steerage. You poor devils. Are you taking those pilgrims in custody to Hong Kong too, Captain? Mr. Swanson, pressure on the fire hose. Captain! You can't watch those men overboard. I'm captain of the ship, person. I know how to deal with these scum... The 
in just a moment, we continue with A Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. If you're a homemaker, you know that whenever there's a two- or three-day holiday, like this Labor Day weekend, you need extra room in your refrigerator for things that you have to buy ahead of time. That's when you really can be grateful for Frigidaire's new design that gives you up to 50% more food storage space in the same kitchen space. Yes, even in a small kitchen, you can have more room to store foods than ever before. In any size kitchen, you can have more refrigerator room for your money. All the new Frigidaire refrigerators bring you this extra storage space along with a meter miser, simplest cold maker ever built, quick cube trays for instant ice service, glass-topped hydrator for fruits and vegetables, and many other important advantages. Frigidaire Deluxe Refrigerators give you such extra features as a full-width super freezer chest that holds up to 50 pounds of frozen foods and a unique sliding basket drawer for eggs in small packages. Remember how Frigidaire refrigerators give you more room, make housekeeping easier in countless ways. And always remember, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. <laughs> Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. An attempt to seize a million dollars worth of gold at sea belonging to a famine relief organization was blocked by the ship's captain. David Mao, a passenger, has been charged with destroying the ship's radio as part of a piracy attempt and is now in the brig. It is the next morning. The ship is in dock at Shanghai, and we pick up Ken, Kagan, Miss Bay Bao, Bliss, and Captain Dorphy on their way to the ship's brig to take David Maho ashore with them. It is ridiculous and cruel. I am sure Mr. Mao can explain everything at the Admiralty Court in Hong Kong. That's why we're flying to Hong Kong this morning, Miss Bay Bao, to get explanations. Here we are, to the right. The door to the brig's open. He's gone. Mao's escaped. What's that? No, he couldn't. The guard, cold as a herring. Well, Miss Baybow? Uh, I... Slugging the guard and escaping kind of ties in with your catching him in the radio room last night, doesn't it, Captain? Where could he have gone? Whoever helped him would know. Are you insinuating... Captain, do you mind if I meet you at the airport later? I have a car waiting for all of us. Mr. Zellschmidt and I will go up in a cab. Uh, suit yourself. Only don't hold up the flight. See you all later. Where could that Mao fellow be? We've only been in port two hours. David Mao is dead, Pagan. The Shanghai police picked up his body an hour ago. Pan American Airlines, flight number seven, leaving Shanghai for Kobe, Osaka, Yokohama. Oh, I'm sorry, Thurston, Tokyo. but... As dispatcher of this field, I have to tell you that the old two-engine bomber's capacity is 2,000 pounds and won't take even 100 pounds of overloading. I thought I made it clear that Mr. Mao's body must be on the plane. But Mr. Thurston, that body with the box weighs 150 pounds. And the shipment of gold weighs 1,000 pounds. That's 1,150. That's 850 pounds to go. Look, Mr. Thurston, you, your partner, Bliss, Captain Durfee, Miss Baybow, and the pilot are a good 900 pounds. So that puts you 50 pounds over the 2,000. Thurston, if you've got to risk overloading, leave the dead man here and take a live guard with Mao's him. Mao's body goes with us. I'll get rid of 50 pounds by stripping the passengers of luggage. Don't you understand? It's your life you're risking, Thurston. That plane is 10 years old, and the floor under you is the door of the old bomb hatch. Put the gold and Mao's body aboard before you take the plane out of the hangar. Uh, okay. The box with the body and the gold will be locked up in the cargo compartment aft. Better get your passengers lined up. Flying that thing, Mr. Thurston? I'd rather walk. If it crashes, Pagan, you'll go to a glorious death. You can tell your grandchildren you were buried with a million dollars in gold. Now, go get the container of food and bring it aboard. Who want to eat in that train? Did you know we were searched for firearms, Mr. Thurston? Yes, Miss Pagan, and I'm sorry, we're overloaded. You'll have to leave that overnight bag here. All right, if I must. 
Has there been word of David Ma? Not yet, Miss Bilbao. What do you mean, telling them I can't take my logbook aboard the plane? Sorry, Captain. We're overloaded. Every ounce counts. It's bad enough that my owners didn't tell me there was a gold shipment aboard. But the least you could have done first was to tell me you were in charge of it. Suppose we discuss it after the Admiralty Court hearing, Captain. The dispatcher back there took my pistol. Weighs too much. Let's get in. This old bomber was a flying coffin in 1940. Here's the food container. Thanks, Bingham. I'll take that bag of silver coins fastened to your right leg. Oh, Mr. Thurston, a few pounds. All my profit. Why, that fellow Bliss's cast weighs more than my silver. Five or six pounds, I bet. More, Pagan. The cast on Bliss's arm must weigh 12 pounds altogether. 12 pounds? Yeah, he's got a pistol in that cast. A pistol? Then why don't Get you... Get inside, quick. Ready for takeoff. nothing to run away from, Mr. Thurston. Maybe he was running to something, Miss Baybow. I'm getting hungry. Have a sandwich, Thurston? Old container full of them back aft. No, thanks. Pagon, you look hungry. Go back with the captain. Who, me? Oh, sure. I'll take a sandwich, Captain. Okay, Zellsmith. I didn't like that takeoff, Thurston. This old crate's overloaded. That was a close shave over those trees. That guy Mao did us all a favor by running out. Another 150 pounds, we'd never have cleared those trees. Have a sandwich, Mr. Thurston? No, thanks, Pagon. Not hungry. You'd better get hungry, Mr. X, and lay your gun on that tray. The food container, he had a gun in it, and I, I brought it aboard. There you are, Captain. My gun. Say, what is this? Take Thurston's gun from the tray, Baybow. Yes, Captain Durfee. And you, Mr. Bliss, get down on the floor quickly. Oh, uh, you know what to do, Baybow. You stand guard over these men. I'll take care of the pilot and handle the plane. I assume, Captain Durfee, that with Miss Baybow's help and a million dollars worth of gold in the cargo compartment... We'll not be going to Hong Kong. We're going to Bing Ching. Cargo stop just ten minutes from here. But I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Now, Mr. Thurston, what's your signal to the pilot? Three knocks. <laughs> Bliss, pull the pilot away from the door. And no funny stuff. Now, down on the floor, all of you. Please. Miss Baybow, your gun pointed at someone else, huh? If you have any trouble, Baybow, just call me. I am sure there won't be enough time for Mr. X to make much trouble, Captain. Ping Tsing. That's an abandoned American airfield. Durfee's going to pick up the gold from the last three piracies. You are clever, Mr. X. None of that loot has ever appeared on the world gold market. This is his last chance to get it out of China. The piracy attempt last night was a fake. Purposely miscarried for Durfee to get rid of some of his partners. Duffy's only problem now is weight. He needs space for another thousand pounds of gold. Not a hard problem to solve, Mr. X. Not if the Bombay doors we're lying on still work. They work. How much do you weigh? Oh, oh not me. I'm anemic. Light as a feather. Feel... As soon as we open the bomb hatch doors and drop you, Mr. Zellschmidt, Bliss and the pilot, and get rid of that box of cargo in the rear compartment, we'll have room for another thousand pounds of gold. Your arithmetic is poor. The four of us and the box of cargo back aft weigh only 850 pounds. Duffy needs another 150 pounds to get that gold out of Ping Sing. What are you driving How at? How much do you weigh, Baybow, precious one? Duffy and I are partners. Up here, you're just 130 pounds of human life, precious one. The cheapest commodity in China. Your weight in gold means $145,000. I think you're worth that to Durfee? I have reasons to trust Captain Durfee. I know. That is why you let him use David Mao to cover up the slaughter of 22 other partners in steerage last night with a fire hose. Stop talking or I... Durfee told you he put Mao in the brig and let him escape to join you later. And he did let David escape. I am joining him. I'm afraid you are a precious one, but not in this world. David Mao's dead. Durfee killed him. You lie. You cannot provoke me with your lies. Look in the cargo compartment in the big box. You'll see Mao's body. Liar! You take me for a fool! David Mao was the fool. He loved you. He knew nothing of you and Durfee or the gold. You are trying to provoke me to open the cargo compartment so that you may get off these Bombay doors. I'm telling you the truth. Go and see for yourself. You can lock the cargo doors behind you. We're still stuck here. I will look. Do not move. She locked it. Break open this cast on my arm, Thurston. A pistol. No. Not yet, Bliss. When she comes out, I'll nail her. Duffy would hear the shot and dumpers. Wait. Captain, you killed David! You killed 
Closing the bomb hatch doors. Now he's putting the plane on the automatic pilot. Yeah, I could feel it take over. Now break open that cast of yours, Bliss. Get the pistol out. Bliss. Shh, shh. It's Duffy. He's coming in here after the gold. Let him have it, Bliss. I'm ready. Oh. All that gold and no partners left. Yeah. A million here, another million waiting at Pink Sing. You've got the gun, Bliss, and you're a pilot. This is what you came aboard the Manchu Queen looking for. Please, Mr. Thurston, don't invite him to knock us off. This is the big chance you've been waiting for, Bliss. Please, Mr. Thurston, let him make up his own mind. What are you waiting for, Bliss? It's just two human beings standing between you and two million in gold. Shut up, Thurston. Remember? Only a sucker thinks human life can't be measured in terms of gold, Bliss. I said shut up! Here. Take my gun, let me get up to the controls before we're all killed. He... He didn't accept your invitation to kill us. There's hope for this sorry world, Pagan. Hope even for China. As long as there are men like Bliss who can pass up the big payoff they've dreamed of. So that millions of humans may have a chance to live. star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Mr. Niles, does Frigidaire make home laundry equipment as well as refrigerators? Lady, you should see the new Frigidaire automatic washer with live water action that washes clothes cleaner, rinses them brighter than ever before. When you have a Frigidaire automatic washer installed in your home, you'll say goodbye forever to wash day work and worry. And now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week... Dangerous Island, a tiny spot in the Indian Ocean where an atomic scientist is trapped with a killer. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as a man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Men Called X is directed by D. Engelbach, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by George Corey and Ruby Sully. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.